I'm here, man. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here today. You know, whatever the future holds, it holds. I never said I wanted to be traded. I'm leaving my options open. Carmelo Kiam Anthony, born May 29, 1984. In today's feature, we'll look at a player that at the end of the day is a top 75 of all time, a top 10 points leader, 10-time All-Star, scoring champion, yada yada, and the list goes on for what you would expect an NBA superstar to accomplish. Yet, why does it feel like with Carmelo, he doesn't get the respect his peers like LeBron James and Dwayne Wade gets and hasn't had the all-time great send-off some believe he deserves to have? Many even think he should still be in the NBA right now, but no team would sign him because the consensus is it'll be subtraction by addition. Like somehow the team would be better off not having to deal with the on-court baggage Melo has historically brought to a team. Like for instance, his playoff plus minus, which measures a player's impact on the game, representing the difference in their team scoring versus the opponents while the player is on the floor, was negative in 15 of the 19 seasons he's played in. A vast difference than his regular season play where only 6 of those 19 seasons were negative all toward the beginning of his career where he dealt with injuries and figuring out the NBA in his younger years. Carmelo was the talk of the town when he came back home to the Knicks with expectations for him to lead them to the promised land at least the conference finals one time. He spent 6 full seasons with the team from 2011-12 to 2016-17 and missed the playoffs four times as the captain of the ship, losing 4-1 in the first round and then 4-2 in the semi-finals his first two seasons in New York. He was then shipped off to OKC where he spent just one season taking 15 shots a game to average 16 points. Don't get me wrong, I agree that Melo was a great player in the NBA but not all great individuals make great leaders or teammates or understand how to get others involved so it opens up more for them and keeps them happy enough to run through a wall for you. And that's what makes Carmelo Anthony one of the more unique superstars of all time. Because in the same breath you can say he was one of the best scorers, you can also say but he never understood how to make his teammates play to their full capabilities next to him because once he touched a ball, all-time scoring was on his mind. Top 10, 28,289 points, never seeing a shot he didn't like, and to his credit made a lot of them were on his mind. But it never led to winning and only to a journeyman ending, basically being pushed out the league, then back in, almost like the crowd cheering for the last man on the bench, without the farewell tour only he of those top 10 never got. Why isn't Carmelo Anthony celebrated for the star some of his numbers say he was? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Off the top, you must know I'm not going to speak too much about Carmelo's high school career. We all know everything he's accomplished on that level. Just think about a phenom prospect who was known for doing everything for his team. Think of a guy that was a dead-eye scorer. Think of Allen Iverson but 6'9". Think of KD before KD. He broke all records, accomplished everything you could want to in high school, and had every top university after him. Point blank, Melo was a legend on that level for Towson High School, then Oak Hill Academy. He was a top 3 rated prospect in 2002, behind the first LeBron Lenny Cook and in front of third rated Amari Stoudemire. He then went on to Syracuse where he had the best freshman season I've ever witnessed winning a national championship along the way. He entered the 2003 NBA draft and was the third overall pick. Melo was looked at to help build the legacy of the NBA post Jordan along with Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, LeBron James and more. By the end of his career, he's played for multiple NBA teams but somehow he still feels like a bit of an underachiever. Stunt number 1. Following the King 
The decision. Most remember exactly how they felt the second after LeBron James surprisingly announced he would be taking his talents to South Beach. To me, this was the point the entire NBA changed forever. It announced to the current players and to the future that clicking up with other top players was now open for business. In fact, it'll probably be your best bet to do so because not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six. After that letdown of an event and the tailgate party the Heat threw, it signified competition was no longer about beating the best, but joining the second and third best, cornering the conference for trips to the finals as a guarantee. Franchise players began scattering like roaches over the next few seasons, looking for who they could team up with to follow whatever the king did. The decision was July 2010, months before the 2010-11 season. Beginning that season, not even a minute into it, word got out that Carmelo had requested a trade from his championship contending Denver Nugget team who just went to the conference finals in 08-09 and hadn't missed the playoffs since Carmelo got there. Denver's small town market, much like Cleveland's, I guess just wasn't big enough for Carmelo anymore. Hmm, I wonder why. He felt he needed to make a splash himself to keep up with the Joneses down in Miami, so he requested he be traded to his hometown Knicks, and a splash it was. Melo played 8 years as the superstar in Denver and averaged 24.9 points a game over his time, with his biggest seasons coming in 06-07 and 09-10 where he averaged almost 29 points a game. Everyone expected big things from him and at that point he was producing. Not championships but he was the superstar he needed to be and right on the edge of maybe riding his way into a championship. Melo was an all-star every year with the Knicks and played some of his best individual basketball, with Amari Stoudemire leading the charge before he went down with injury. They missed four postseasons in the next six years as Carmelo racked up points and news headlines. In trying to follow the king, he chose status and points over a real chance to win and building his own kind of legacy. Stunt number two, not a contender. The second reason I think Melo's career is less regarded is because outside his time in Denver, and especially as a Nick, he was never a contender to win a championship, just an individual player clearly concerned more about status and individual accolades, even if he didn't think it at the time. His game did the thinking and talking. But even more than Melo, I have to blame the Knicks for not putting a team around him that allowed him to contend. Granted, with Melo's contract, it wasn't necessarily easy, but it could be done if LeBron, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh, top players in the conference, could all fit on the same team. The Knicks continually place past their prime veterans around Melo, like Mike Bibby and Baron Davis in 2011-12, Marcus Camby, Tyson Chandler, Jason Kidd, Kenyon Martin 2012-13, Ron Artest 2013-14, the following year complete rebuild mode, and the addition of Kristaps Porzingis 15-16 who played well enough for the Knicks to consider a day on the horizon where they didn't need the aging mellow. This was his chance to show he could lead the Knicks past LeBron and deep in the playoffs and because that didn't happen, whether you blame the Knicks or Carmelo himself, hurt Melo's legacy and made him seem like a one-trick scoring pony that cared only about self. Not to mention him not embracing Lin's sanity and using it to help get him over the playoff hump. Losing is one thing, but losing as Carmelo and the Knicks is another. Stunt number three, a me first play style. Ball hog, a term in basketball that means when the ball touches your hands, most likely it leaves only after you take the shot. But what makes a ball hog? Because people said Jordan was a ball hog, Kobe as well, but those guys won multiple championships as the leaders of their teams and were beloved for it in the process. I think the difference in Melo being called a ball hog or black hole was because of his play style. 
the fast moving feet that didn't really go anywhere because he lacked athleticism to explode and finish at the end, made it hard to watch the same move every time down and made him seem like a ball hog. When Kobe or Jordan did it, they finished with a breathtaking dunk or layup and you forgot the ball hogging it took to get there. Melo shot quick threes at bad times, forced pump fakes after pump fakes, and held the ball possession after possession, resulting in a 2.7 assists per game career number, averaging at least 4 assists just one time. Because of this, he made himself really just a scorer, an inefficient one at that, who got even worse in the playoffs. This is why teams were reluctant to pick him up after just 10 games in Houston in 1819 and after 21-22 with the Lakers. Teams understand the only thing they get from Melo is a lot of attempts, maybe some timely threes, mad head taps, but really nothing else. All in all, Carmelo Anthony still had a great basketball career where he was named a 75th anniversary player and certainly a one of a kind. As a scorer, he was one of the best in history, seen in his 28,289 points, 307 points shy of passing Shaquille O'Neal for 8th all time. He helped change the game for tall small forwards and brought excitement to a Knicks franchise in the 2010s, growing dead throughout the 2000s. Salute, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunned. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth, in the mouth.